just something that I've always known. I can always go back to it. It's helped me through some really hard times. That emotional comfort of coming home. That safe net when I didn't feel safe. It takes me back to my childhood every single time. It's like hearing that great rock song when you get your first kiss or something. You always are going to remember it. How many of you had never seen Monster Squad before tonight? You are wow. welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. The seed for the movie was I want to do the Little Rascals meet the Universal Monsters. Scaring the hell out of kids seemed like a great idea. And then the laughs played against that. <laughs> it was a crazy time. Everything happened very fast. This is probably the biggest thing I'm ever going to do. I didn't know that this would be such a formative beginning. When Dracula lifted her up, he hissed at me. I didn't have a lot of work to do because she was actually terrified. On an opening night, we went to all the theaters that it was playing. I will not forget that. It was a huge hit. And by it, I mean the Lost Boys. <laughs> there was seven or eight people in the theater. And then it disappeared. I never got the sense that this movie really was like... finding a new audience or that its original audience were enjoying it again. The first time I ever saw Monster Squad. I was at a sleepover party with a friend of mine. It was on HBO. Every time we go to the video store, that's what I'd rent. I even had a bootleg DVD. The word got out. Everything we had seen up till then had all been kid stuff, and this was the first taste of something dangerous. These kids are real kids. We were a part of the squad. We went to school with them, and we are them. This movie resonates. They put up the ticket saying Monster Squad reunion. It sold out real fast. Wait, you know this movie? <laughs> <laughs> I did try to start my own Monster Squad. We never actually performed any jobs. <laughs> we we did the same thing. Friends mm -hmm. have this one weird thing in common that nobody else knows about. This is a zine I did. It's called I Had Rudy. Wow. Oh, that's me. What a really pleasant surprise that this seed that we planted grew into something. It's like shooting a basket in 1987, and then it doesn't go in until 20 years later. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome hell yeah that, that is. is awesome i can't wait to watch that i absolutely can't wait and you wrote the trivia questions correct tim i did yep and the answers oh. as it would happen well i, I would hope so yeah, if it's Greg, just about the movie cheat. That it is. Really yeah. I tried not to do any really should be trivia without any answers. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna do like a monster one, but even then, like you can get the answer in the movie. So actually Monday night, we're actually gonna have our first trivia stream where all we do is play trivia. So that's right. Nice. Hey Andre. Hey, welcome back. I'm back like magic. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? Uh good. How are you guys doing? So it just uh it's over. We fit you finished. Yeah. Yes, we just finished it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We actually watched the trailer to the documentary as well, right after it was over. So, okay. Um, that looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, looks uh, yeah. There's actually two trailers out there. There's one a little shorter and one that's on the website that's a little bit longer. Um, but no, thanks. Thanks for watching that. That's awesome. Who's, um, who's all here? Like what I've got, uh, I've got Jeff. I can see Jeff, Tim, Greg. And my nerdy home. Yeah. That is Steph. Yes, that's Stephanie. Steph. Okay, there's no Stephanie mm -hmm. yeah. there. And is that every? Is that everybody? Is that uh, what can I see? I've got Awesome. I think I've got everybody though. Yeah. yeah, that was uh, first time I watched it in a while. Uh, okay, I think like all of us here, like all with all our friends and our younger brothers and sisters, we all watched it together. That's how we found it as kids. And uh, Tim, did you start your own Monster Squad with your friends like we did? Oh, yeah, just like the guy had, in the documentary said. We, 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 had, had the we had little cards and everything. Yeah, we mm -hmm. did. We did. Mm -hmm. And like I said in my tweet, we made weapons, and I could go into detail <laughs> about what we made, but these were probably pretty deadly, and luckily we didn't oh. ever have a reason to use them because, yeah. Yeah. I don't think we were going to have to fight any monsters. but And then I went to my grandfather's house you know, about 30 miles away, and we started building this treehouse just because of the movie. So it wasn't nice. as big as the one in the movie, but it was probably half as big. So nice. yeah. Nice. Now that because look, it's it's not the first time that I've heard almost those exact right. stories. 
Right. But each one is different and individual and new because it's it's yours and it's yours. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, wh where did you where did you grow up? I grew up in Stockton, California. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, that's. I think your sister was born in Fresno. Um, she was. Yeah. So that's you know probably halfway to LA from Stockton. So yeah. Oh yeah. No, I, I know. Up by I, Sacramento. I've, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've been through it. And uh, Jeff, where where did you grow up? I grew up in Evansville, Indiana. Okay. It's, it's the very southern tip of Indiana, right near Kentucky. Oh, oh no, uh, I know. South, it. They, uh, uh, yeah. Always had the worst college basketball uniforms because they had sleeves. Yes. Um, yes. They, oh, yes, they did. Oh, God, <laughs> yes. they were so bad. See, now I'm, so I'm, bad. I'm, I'm, I'm aging myself here to tell you what era I know college basketball in Evansville. So I'm a, I was a huge college yeah, basketball. Cool. I, I, actually, yep. I actually played basketball in college. So uh, nice. You know, early 90s, mid 90s college basketball was literally my entire life. Um, and Stephanie, where are you from? Uh, I am born and raised in South Texas. Okay. I don't really like the, the city, but yeah, South, South Texas. Okay. Awesome. Uh, I've, I've been to Corpus Christi. Does that count? Yes, it counts. I'm very <laughs> close. I'm close to Austin. <laughs> oh, so yeah. yeah. Like Corpus Christi is like way down there. Like I was, yeah. it was a May, like if, if, if anybody's ever been to Texas, it never ends. Mm -mm. You're no, always in. You're always. In. You can just drive forever, and it's always in. Yeah. Uh, where is uh, where's uh, where's Greg from? Um, born and raised in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I have been to Green Bay, Wisconsin. I uh, I I was I was fortunate enough to go there. I had to work there for like five six days uh, in a whole other kind of world. But I got to work in an office in Lambeau for like six days. Nice. Which oh, wow. nice. Very um, nice. and got to experience Green Bay, which is a whole other thing in itself. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. I love Austin, by the way. It's, um, it's one of my favorite, favorite towns. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I feel like I just kind of came in here and hijacked everything. So <laughs> no, this is great. Hijack away. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. What's, uh, so you were, you're saying the you, first time you watched the movie in a while, mm -hmm. uh, is anybody never seen it? No, not we've all not on it. the panel. There was some in the chat. Looks like uh, who was it? it? Said they just watched it. Uh, Blake said it was his first time watching it tonight. A few people as well, but a lot of people have, have really liked. And it's funny too. There's a lot of times I meet people and I talk about the movie and they're like, "What? What, what movie are you talking about?" I'm like, "You've never seen that movie. You grew up in my my time in the so 80s. This is exactly yeah. like Tim when you were talking about growing up yeah. and building the weapons, doing that. Th yeah. This is what's interesting. And that's why I asked you where you were from. Um, because it's fascinating to me to learn these stories of who was where and when mm -hmm. and why was the real question that led to making a documentary. Mm -hmm. uh, because, Jeff, you're like, what do you mean you don't know this movie? Mm -hmm. So when we were growing when these kids were growing up, when you were growing up and you watched this movie, uh, when you saw it, you're like, this is my jam. Like, I, yeah. I'm going to go build a tree house right? oh, yeah. Yeah. and then you go tell your friend come to my tree house like for monster squad and they go what are you talking about mm -hmm. and that was such the weird disconnect when this movie came out that some people saw it and they held on to it tight and other yeah. people never even heard of it and then they see it years later and like you don't understand how much i wish i had seen it when i was 10 or 12 mm -hmm. uh so th those were always those fascinating stories but really the the catalyst and the inspiration for even doing any documentary of any sort was stories exactly like you guys' stories of growing up yeah. and, and, and building building a treehouse and, and, and how this how this movie connected and impacted you. Yeah. Uh, and then the you know the documentary actually goes beyond that. It's not just about monsters, but it goes like why do why do movies connect with people and and, and what makes them change their lives? You know, like mm -hmm. what is it? And what are those stories uh, all told through the lens of Monster Squad fans? But, you know, Monster Squad has a very unique story in and of itself as a film that absolutely bombed when it came out. Yeah. And that's, you know, it's another thing, you know, like Jeff growing up or Tim, you know, Stephanie, whenever you saw it for the, you see it when you were young the first time or were you older uh, when you saw it? I was, I was younger when I saw it. My cousin uh, introduced it to me. He's a lot older than I am. Um, but he introduced it to me and we would watch it nonstop at my grandma's house all the time. Uh, right. And so now it's kind of like a tradition on Halloween. Uh, we, we watch it every Halloween when it comes out. It's just like Hocus Pocus. It's those movies that we watch. Yeah. Well, that's good. Everybody, everybody I, I love it. I love everybody it. loves Hocus Pocus. Yeah. Um, 
and everybody's heard about this sure, focus. Not, not yeah, everybody's but, but heard no, of Monster Squad. <laughs> not everyone's heard of the Monster Squad. And I'm just like, yeah. no, we have to watch the Monster Squad too. If we're going to watch Hocus Pocus, mm-hmm. we're watching the Monster Absolutely. Squad. Absolutely, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's what's interesting about sort of the 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 story of the fans is what was important to me to make this documentary because it wasn't about us and it wasn't about the movie, but the movie itself has a story, uh, and that story only continued to live on because of these fans. Mm-hmm. And now what's interesting is these fans didn't know each other existed for twenty years, right. unless you knew your friend in the neighborhood and then you stayed in touch. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then, you know, something like technology, look, we're all in different places right now. We're all, be able, you know, sitting around being able to, you know, yeah. wax nostalgic about something that, you know, was fun for us as kids. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And, you know, that that really made a difference in 2006 when we had uh, that first reunion screening. And it just because Monsters was dead. It was honestly dead. Mm-hmm. Um, if you had an old VHS, you know, that you stole or they gave from your local video store. They just, you rent it every weekend, kid, just take it. We, you know, we're tired of seeing it. Um, I've heard that story at least 700. Well, it's funny you should say that. It's funny you should say that because there was a video, you know how there was one on every corner in the late eighties. My mom brought it home as a rental. I watched it and I went back and rented it and rented it. And, you know, they had several copies. So finally they start selling when they, you know, it's not running out that much. I got it from there. We passed it around the neighborhood until the box was just literally shreds. So Facebook, 20 years later, I found all my neighborhood friends because I moved half the country away. The first thing I ask is, hey, bitch, where's my Monster Squad movie you never gave back? So that's the very first thing I said. So of all the things we did as kids, that's what stuck because we passed it around and probably watched it 50 times the well, uh, summer of 87 that. and 88 so so you watched the uh the trailer to uh wolfman's got nards yeah. uh, we that that story mm-hmm. of passing around that yeah. copy whether mm-hmm. it's from the video store or something you um you know recorded off of hbo yeah uh the, those are store those are those stories abound as well and yes. what's cool is you know we have a little kind of uh, insert shot of a you know, VHS had going into a VCR and starting to play. And that was something cool that uh, my, the, the the producer and the, and the main guy that made that actually physically made the documentary with Henry, <laughs> Henry McComas, that's his story. His, uh, his older brother showed him the movie and, uh, or, and he had a box of tapes in the attic or something. <laughs> you end up seeing it. And usually when you find a box of tapes in the attic, they're not, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, kids movies, uh, but yeah, and yeah. but he Henry saw this as a young. He was really young when he saw it, and he's a you know he was born in the '80s, so he's a '90s kid. Uh, and his older brother had you know a box of tapes that were just in the attic, and it, there was a tape that had just like a piece of masking uh, a VHS tape that had a piece of masking tape on it that just said Monster Squad, and he watched it and was instantly connected with this movie, and he started taking it around the neighborhood in his cul-de-sac and sharing it with his friends. But what they did is every time someone took it, they drew like with marker, one of the monsters or added something oh, to their VHS. Awesome. That's so and awesome. so we, kind of, we, we, we sort of mimic that a little in that, in that trailer. So that's a little homage to Henry's kind of story. And what's crazy about a movie impacting summoning and stories coming full circle is Henry, my guy that I made the doc with, um, there, there's a handful of other people which were awesome, but Henry's the main, the main driving force uh, on physical production. Uh, he found this movie, loved it, showed it to as many people as he possibly could as a '90s kid. Grew up, goes to film school, moves to three or four different states, ends up in LA, and we meet at my friend's office building by happenstance, just timing. I was there to pick up my friend for lunch. And this guy comes wow. out of the office and is like, holy shit. And I'm like, hey, how are you? <laughs> and um, we ended up making a documentary together. Nice. Wow. And yeah. that's, the, that's the only reason. So talk about, a, you know, Henry. I love listening to Henry tell his story about how not only Monster Squad impacted him as a kid and as a filmmaker, because he's a, he's, a, you know, he's a genre fan, but he's not just a genre you know, only fan. And, you know, his life is completely different. <laughs> But, you know, because of this, but then he got to make a movie. He always tells me, he's like, I grew up watching the Monster Squad. And then I got to make a film with the Monster Squad. He's like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know how to, I don't know how to weave that into my brain. <laughs> and uh, so, but see, you just add that to the, the, you know, the bucket of all these great stories. And that's, that's really what the essence of the doc really tries to capture. 
That's fantastic. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait to watch I can't, it. I know. I, I already ordered yeah. it. So, yeah. oh, and I, okay, I can great. say that we are in a community with a lot of people. And, you know, I don't think we'll have a problem getting a lot of people to um, take a look at this documentary and purchase mm -hmm. it. So it's yeah. oh, one well, we're look, definitely going to push. So. Absolutely. That'd be great. I appreciate it. It's, yes. uh, you know, what, what's awesome about this release, uh, it, it, it took a lot longer than a lot of us because we festival two years ago. Wow. And we had a, an amazing seven month film festival run and won awards and won the, the, mm -hmm. the, the festival all over the world. And uh, then it just kind of went dormant for a while for a, a, a couple different reasons that all kind of congealed to delay something. But we mm -hmm. had actually a deal done last summer and it should have been done. And, you know, welcome to Hollywood and some different things and some missed emails here and there. Not on my yeah. Um, yeah. that that deal ended up not happening and we had to start from scratch in like March um, right when COVID was hitting and mm. um, you know it's interesting with this partner that we have with Gravitas they're really in that VOD space and I think that's almost perfect for right now um, but yeah. they really they listened uh, you know when we were talking about uh, if you're not going to do it then someone else has to come in and do it because mm. a lot of Monster Squad fans are physical media people and they want to collect stuff. And yeah. even if they're not physical media collectors, they are Monster Squad collectors, and they're going to want a Blu-ray or a DVD to put on the shelf right next to all their other stuff. Yep. And and luckily, you know, they ended up putting out, uh, you know, they're, it's done different now. Like, you don't have to manufacture, you know, 10,000 Blu-rays and warehouse them and then, you know, have, you know, yeah. Martha and Justin in the back, you know, licking envelopes and mailing out <laughs> DVDs. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's done different now, but they were luckily they were, they saw the value in, in putting out there. Boy, we didn't know, you know, we had the announcement of actual the release uh, just the other day, and that Amazon pre order went bonkers. Yeah, really. <laughs> and yeah, we were uh, by That's the good. end of the by the end of the first day, we were in the top twenty five of all movies on Amazon. Wow, wow. for sales, That's that so day. impressive and That's fantastic. Uh, yeah. We were the number one documentary and we were the number one special interest and we were number two in horror. Uh, wow. You know, by, by the end of that first day, that's changed over the last 24 hours, but Jeez. you know, cause it kind of goes like that, but even so we weren't expecting that. That just means mm -hmm. those fans went out and, and, and rocked it. But you know, Tim, like you said, that, that's really what it is. Cause there's not a giant studio behind this. There's not a, a big, you know, marketing campaign. And uh, you know, I've got my publicist that's working with me and I'm really kind of, leading the charge again of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, getting the stock out because, you know, it's, it, you know, I have a studio partner, a bunch of production people was awesome. And, but, you know, but it's, it's, it's personal to me. It's, it, it's my movie to get out and try to, you know, make it happen. And, you yeah. know, I appreciate, you know, the, the signal boosts and the shout outs and, you know, it's, it's one of those things like if, you know, that core monster squad group, you know, if half of them actually watch it or buy it, that's a, that's a decent number. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, if, if, oh, if half, sure. you know, if them, if each one of them goes and ha you know is responsible for like a, a half another person, you know, to engage with the original film or engage with the documentary, that you know, it, it just kind of grows and grows. Mm -hmm. And I think on VOD, you know, depending on where we lives, it's accessible to everybody. <clears throat> you know, you don't. The only option is not buying a Blu-ray. You know, that's just an option. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, <clears throat> you know, we got the you know the the information on how many. Um, you know, providers, the platforms are going to uh, provide the movie when it releases on the 27th. So it's a pretty good list. You know, it's all it's the major good. cable outlets, Dish Network's doing a big thing. Um, you know, it's, you know, it's on, it'll be Amazon Prime for rental and digital download mm -hmm. and iTunes. Um, and a lot of places don't get multiples. And, you know, so I'm, I'm lucky with Gravitas Ventures, you know, the, the distributor that's putting out, they're really in that space and, mm -hmm. you know, do a good job of getting it on these platforms because, you know, a lot of people watch movies on video on demand and, you know, they download it or they rent it. And, you know, that's, I, th I think that helps with, with this to getting out to a, you know, a big audience yes. so everybody can oh, enjoy yeah. it. Absolutely. Yep. But word of mouth is always a big thing. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it works because I, you know, prior to doing this live stream today, <clears throat> I had no idea that that documentary exists. But I found okay. it today. Neither did I. <laughs> I bought it as soon as I saw yeah. the trailer. I'm like, this looks great. I'm okay. like, like, I got to see this. Yeah. So, okay. Oh, well, great. That's awesome. Thanks. Um, but, you could have very knowingly that. waited and just rented it, you know, in, in <laughs> or so, but I want to, you know, I, I love it. Thank you. Um, and if you hate it, give it to a friend. Um, 
<laughs> you know, it's always a weird thing when you see a garage sale and you like you see a movie you're in for like a dollar on a DVD. Right. Like, right. uh, it was like, do you know what you have here? Uh, yeah, I know, I've right? Actually, <laughs> I've actually been somewhere and I saw someone selling a Monster Squad DVD. Like, you know, I was like, I'll take that from you. Um, <laughs> but it, it's because they don't, you know, it's they're the other half. Like, you either know mm-hmm. everything about it or you've never heard right. about, about this movie. And that's because it bombed in 1987. I can't. <laughs> it yeah. Bombed. And we cover that in the doc. There's there's a big there's a big section about the history of it and and, and the release and and the letdown and the bombing mm-hmm. <laughs> and, the, and is, the rubble. So who who is talk who who is talking about that? Was it you, Tim? Who said, before we yeah. started the movie? Yeah, uh, yeah. Some of the stuff I've read over the years, Andrea, is like it kind of had a hard time finding an audience because it is pretty gory. So it's like. Parents probably didn't want to let their kids watch it, but the yeah. parents didn't want to watch it because, oh, it's a bunch of kids. That's the perception, not really the reality. Mm-hmm. So I think that is kind of the biggest thing. So that's you're you're right on the nose with you know with 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 I think is fifty uh, percent of the problem of why, mm-hmm. why mm-hmm. uh, the other half was the marketing campaign, which added to what you were talking about. Um, yeah, it was. I I was. I, this is just completely my opinion as someone who was inside of it, but commenting as an outside observer about the effect that had what you were talking about, Tim mm-hmm. is the movie was too kid-like for the older teens that were cool, that wanted to go mm-hmm. see something. They were going to go see a kid's mm-hmm. movie. No, uh, they were going to go see the lost boys, mm-hmm. which came out, yeah. two mm-hmm. weeks, which came out two weeks prior, to yeah. Just, you know, hammered the box office for a month. Um, and it was also too dark or scary or gory for eight, nine, 10 year olds, which are a big movie going audience. And so you're really left with a a very small window Mm -hmm. of Mm pre-teens or this in-between group, which now we know that that's an actual market and we call them tweens. Mm -hmm. They didn't have that back then. No. Right. And I always joke that um, I always say that you know, in, in a theater full of people, and it, it gets a good, it gets a good robust roar. Um, <laughs> I was like, had they known that that little window was an actual thing, uh, we would have made the first tween movie ever. And by now, we 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 probably would have made like Monster Squad Eight: Breaking Dawn or something, you know. It's <laughs> been <laughs> <laughs> one of those things because they would have just taken off. Uh, uh-huh. But the other thing that didn't help is it got a it had a PG thirteen rating, and yeah. that kind of stunts your your yeah. your access right there because parents right. are not they don't want to go in and see a monster movie with their kids. Mm-hmm. They yeah. drop them off and buy the ticket and go go, but. Then a lot of things that's like, hey, I'll, I'll drop my 12-year-old off at the mall to go see this movie. But I saw the trailer, and there's no way in hell I'm see- letting my kids see this movie. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, that, it all ties in to make a great recipe for box office mm-hmm. drainage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, for a for a for a, a, a bomb, which yeah. and it has nothing to do with the movie or the quality, None. Or the no. performances or the effects, because all of that is actually pretty good. Oh, it's yeah. like, they're the best, the best monsters that I've ever seen. Yes, they're my favorite right. monsters that I've ever seen on film. My well, I don't disagree with you. I'm a little biased because I also know all the guys <laughs> that made those that made those creatures, right? Um, it was fascinating to watch those guys work. Um, I Monster Squad's even more important in that small segment of this industry now because those guys invented new ways to make practical monsters using new equipment and new technology and new artistic creative ways. Right. And but they were making the old monsters. And they had yeah. new materials and new ways to do stuff. And they innovated stuff as they did this. Uh, you know, out of a new, you know, studio that was run by a guy named Stan Winston, who became pretty good at what they oh, did. Yeah. And uh, it it's fascinating because all these creature effects guys were all like 20, 22 years old. Wow. Uh, you know, when they're starting out, Stan Winston <laughs> hired them and assigned them. There's a great Stephanie. You'll If you like these monsters, you'll love mm-hmm. the section in the doc where we go talk to the guys that made them. 
Oh yes. Oh and yeah. We get awesome. some cool. Good we get stuff. some cool BTS stuff of when they're actually creating these monsters and the backstory of how Steve Wayne came up, you know, with the the paint concept and you know, and making the Gilman suit because he and Matt Rose made mm -hmm. the Gilman suit, um, which I think it, th these creatures and especially the Gilman suit, what Steve and Matt did with that, because that's actually one piece. Wow! Oh, really? It's a that, one. That really? whole bodysuit is one is one piece. And then the hands go on, wow. and the the head is one piece. And ironically, Tom Woodruff Jr., who became a very famous creature performer, and also is a very famous effects uh, creature effects creator, he did the Frankenstein makeup. He invented, he created that. But he's also the guy in the Gilman suit. It was the first creature he wow. ever performed as. Wow! So this changed his life and career as well. Uh, but that he gets glued in that suit, and it's all one, and you can't get out. That's insane. And no wonder it looks so good. I mean, yeah, yeah. And yeah. That, that chain, that one suit, the Wolfman stuff is my favorite. It's amazing. Oh, it's oh, the I, best Wolfman in movie. Best Wolfman. Best the Wolfman. The Gilman suit changed the game, and Steve Wang and Matt Rose just became icons. And now all the guys that worked for Stan Winston on Monster Squad, you know, they worked on other movies like. Predator and Alien and all those, you know, all those other small box office flops. Um, <laughs> uh, they all, they all grew up and they all now own their own effect, and they're the largest names in the industry. And everybody wants to work for them. Uh, and back in the day, there was these young guys trying to work for this unknown guy named Stan Winston. Uh, so, it's seven, you'll you'll like this section when you're talking about the the, the creature effects because it, it it's pretty cool. That's, That's nice. fantastic. I'm looking forward to that part. Me too. Yeah, I, Me I too. love the monsters in the movie. Yeah, they're, they're great. They all really the, are. All the effects are really good. We were also talking about how great the Dracula is. It's probably one of the, if not the best on screen performance for Dracula. Duncan's and awesome. Dracula yeah. is really ruthless in this film. He's yeah. a very yeah. brutal Dracula, too. I mean, just fantastic yeah. job for that Dracula. Yeah. We, we were talking about how good that is, too. Yeah, it's I love how fabulous Duncan is an on screen. In in on most lists, he's definitely in the top ten. Most he's in the top five, and mm -hmm. a lot he's in the top three. Uh, so, and I don't I don't disagree. Uh, but he is absolutely insane. It, it's not a, it's not a campy kids movie. What's her with this guy as this character? And well, Jeff, you'll dig the bit because you know. We have Duncan sit down and explain his approach, you know, to bringing this iconic character. Oh, know, I can't the, wait! The iteration. Oh my god! And because and and Duncan is you know this very tall, you know, just gorgeous human being, uh, even today, and he's almost seventy. Um, wow. He's just got this voice and this look, and it's like just you know melts you know melts metal just when he looks at you, mm -hmm. and um, I mean, and that comes across, and. I, I think he's a fabulous actor in general, but he's a fabulous yes. actor in this as Dracula. And like you said, he's not, he ain't messing around. He is. No, he's not. He is a he he just, yeah, he's just this big presence in the movie and he doesn't even say much. No, he doesn't the, at all. I think like yeah. in the first 30 minutes, he only says like three words mm -hmm. in, the whole, yeah. in the first half hour of the movie. He's just this presence. presence. Yeah, yeah, he, it, he's he's just commanding on screen. It's mm. it's, it's fabulous, and it, what I love of the fact that it, it it was on the page, but it comes across in the movie. It's like, and he doesn't he doesn't care, like he's mm -mm. It, no, he blows up y'all's tree house. It, yeah, <laughs> he, this is my, it's my favorite thing. One of my favorite things to talk about it, because it's my favorite shot in the movie is he runs over picket. <laughs> and then gets out of his own car and rips the door off his own car. Yeah. yeah. And we're all pissed. We're all like really like, oh my God, don't scratch my car. I'm like, ooh, there's a on my door. And like he just rips the he doesn't care. Yeah. That's how mad and then he is. He throws the dynamite. He throws a stick of dynamite in where he thinks kids are. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. He yeah. thinks we're in there. Yeah. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. This is insane. And uh it's and that's what just really makes it kind of it's deep and dark and real and this movie covers a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and we're Absolutely. we're mainly not mainly, but Star Wars is is something we nerd off about. So I want to tell everyone on the panel and in the chat, 
Duncan as Grand Admiral Thrawn. If you look on the cover of the first Heir to the Empire book, I think the artist based it on Duncan oh. because he oh looks my God. just wow. Yes. You know what? I've never thought of that. And I nerd out there too, by the way. Awesome. <laughs> yes. um, I have read all the Grand Admiral Thrawn books. Um, that's where I was. Uh, are we going on a Star Wars tangent now? No, um, I was just going to say, I, no, no, I, Thrawn, no yeah. please rein me would. in because I definitely will. Um, I wanted, that's where I wanted the movies to go. Mm -hmm. I wanted the movies to go sort of where the novels were. And oh, yeah. I don't know. We had a, we had, we had like two Star Wars movies or, or three Star Wars movies and, and no Luke Skywalker. I, I didn't want it all. I just wanted some, but I, I would have loved something else for like, I want to see Mara Jade. You know, I want to see like, you know, these, these cool That's characters. That's what our community is about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, is. Oh, yes. it really is. So, absolutely. So, yeah. so can I be in your club then? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. You are. Right. Yes. Um, yes. But so, and are, are there other people listening in that, in that, in that, in that dorky group absolutely. that I'm now in? Oh, yeah. We can nerd out together. It's, yeah. a, it's um, a very big, big vocal group. Here, here's a, here's a, oh man. It's not here. It's a, it's in the other house. Oh my god! I would have just the story's cool, but I would have just absolutely blown you away. Um, <laughs> when I was uh, ten, um, the <clears throat> third movie was coming out, mm -hmm. and being a kid in LA and being in the industry, when I was ten. I'd already worked on a couple films and some TV shows, so I was like, you know, I was I was an old timer, <laughs> and uh, you know. It had all this pool, but I got invited to go to the Academy screening of the third movie. <gasps> wow. When it was titled Revenge of the Jedi. Wow. And so I went to the Academy building, DJ, you know, everybody's there. And when you were, if you were a kid that got there, you got like a swag bag and it had art and stickers and toys and action figures. Awesome. And all of it was branded Revenge of the Jedi oh, before they changed it. Before they changed the title. Before they changed it. Before they changed it. And I and of course I go and I get this. I'm 10 years old and there's a box with a ship in it. And I see the movie. I'm like, oh, it's great. I I'm not an Ewok fan, but that's a whole we'll come to another <laughs> we'll come to another we'll come to another chat. Uh, because we all know the original story of what it was supposed to be. It wasn't supposed to be yep. um, so yeah. Whatever, George. Um, you ba you bailed out there for merch. I get it, but you know. Oh, what? No. Uh, and only one of them died. Like, come on, only one. They should have all been killed. Only one should have lived. All right, yes. Yeah. I yeah. agree in one hundred thousand yes. percent. Yeah. I don't even I mean, as a kid, like, how are these things still surviving? What's happening? I don't. It's, it's so bad. Um, with their primitive but, weapons but it, too. Yes. So I, I leave the screening. <laughs> I leave the screening with bag of swag, and all this branding. And there's a a, a box. Um, you know, it was before blister packs, but it was you know cardboard mm -hmm. box with a you know clear front has a ship in it. I go home. I'm like, oh, this is cool because this ship's not even in the movie, because it, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I take it out and I play with it for you know probably two years. Uh, little did I know that when I opened all of that stuff and r ruined it, that they were going to one change the title of the movie, or the ship was not going to be in existence. But I have the toy of a ship that doesn't exist. Right. And like I don't even know where that is. And I'm like, I don't even know how much that would be worth today. <laughs> wow. Oh my God, I can't even. Imagine. I wouldn't get rid of it, but I just wonder how much it would be worth. And yeah. uh, the only thing I have is that you got a button. You know, like a little uh, old mm -hmm. school button, mm -hmm. and it said, "and it said Revenge of the Jedi." And oh so my I still god, have, that's I fantastic! I still have oh, that. Cool, that's awesome. God, yeah. and I thought it was in this drawer right here. I was going to pull it out and go "pachow," but it's not. It's in the, <laughs> I, I <laughs> see letterhead, like you know, internal memos from Lucasfilm that are auctioned on Facebook groups for twenty thousand dollars. I'm like, it's a piece of paper they used, <laughs> Tim, but no people buy that stuff. Oh, it's insane. <laughs> it's <laughs> insane because I had a ship. In a box that doesn't oh, exist. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's now I have the Revenge of the Jedi too. Just the branding. Oh. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah it's amazing, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, okay, that was our Star Wars tangent. But yeah, I did want to see Thrawn. <laughs> um, yeah, who could play Thrawn? Like, 
boy, Dun- Duncan would be great, but he's a little yeah, old. Yeah, I think so. He's um, too old now, yeah. He's yeah. too old. Um, he would have been fantastic for that. Role. Jeremy yeah, Irons been... is probably too old. He was thrown around 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. Like, he could yeah. do the role. So He, he would have been great, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so now yeah. we're left with what? Like, Cusack? No, he's a dick. No, um, he, uh... <laughs> <laughs> no he just he comes across as one in all his roles. Like, he can't be like the like acerbic, you know, jaded animal. He's yeah. got to be like. Yeah. Uh, Q's yeah. great. I love, I love, I love him as an actor. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll come up with that later. Anyway, yeah, so definitely. you know, next topic because, uh, good gosh, I think we could Star Wars forever, right? Oh, yeah, um, well, yeah absolutely. <laughs> we can, and and yeah. the other thing, I'm not, yeah. I'm not, I am not name dropping because it had nothing to do with me, it had to do with my uh former brother in law, but um, uh, because the backstory is we uh, he was a, a, a hotel and casino kind of. D- designer conceptual design kind of like project guy uh, yeah. concept guy and i work i worked with him for a number of years and we were doing this big project and the model was being built by the ilm guys and so we got to go up to ilm a bunch while they were building our scale model which nice. was actually like a which is actually like a 10 foot high volcano and which was going to be a hotel <laughs> and uh but going to ilm you get to go into the model shop and all that. And that's mm-hmm. right when they were starting up episode one, which we thought was going to be good. Um, was it not? <laughs> Sorry. Is that, it's not a, it's not a secret, right? That I just like spoil it. <laughs> yeah. Phantom in the sun. Um, but anyway, uh, oh, but man. they were just, so the other cool thing, if, if we got star Wars, you know, geek out session, another one, <laughs> Is I was in the aisle. I love the shop. prequels, though. I have to throw that out there. I'm a huge. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> Stephanie, <laughs> you're, you're, but you know what? You're, you're they were made for you, and you're much <laughs> and you're much younger than us. So it's, it's so yeah. good. So it, and that's exactly what I understand about Star Wars. They're not made for me. I get it. They don't. They don't. They don't. It's not that they don't care, but they don't make it for me. I understand. Uh, but what was cool about when you go to the model shop? And these guys are fantastic artists, right? And there's like sketches on napkins that just blow your mind. But you walk in and like it's like a cube farm. There's like there's like a regular corporate office with you know shit hanging from the ceiling, like a tie fighter on a fishing, yeah, you know, fishing line and stuff. I'm like, oh my god, this is amazing. Mm-hmm. And then like leaning randomly up against like the back corner, like kind of askew, is Han Solo and Carbonite. <laughs> And then oh you're God. like, wait, what? Wow. You're like, how is this not like oh. in like a vault in a museum? Yeah. And it's just leaning up in the middle. You're like, what? But it then we had to go back and look at our model. And there was a there was a guy, you know, one of the artists. Uh, and I looked over, and everything was all hush hush. You had to like sign, like you weren't going to talk, and you can't take pictures because they were wow. gearing up pre production for episode one, and which no one knew was anything about it or whatever. And right. we didn't know anything about metachlorians, but. Um, <laughs> I'm in the model shop and we're standing, we're standing in, uh, do I come across as bitter? With the, with the, no, not at all. I absolutely love it. I know you like it, but um, one thing I do think is unfair as another tangent is the world gave Jake Lloyd a lot of shit. And you know what? It mm-hmm. ain't Jake Lloyd's fault. No, nope. no, um, no, no, no. So we I, support I, I, him I, will, I will defend the younger actor on something, mm-hmm. even though he was put in an impossible position. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, great face, cute kid. Mm-hmm. Terrible, everything. terrible dialogue. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. That's terrible. Even, that never mind. There's something I, else I'll remember. But anyway, let me tell you my model shop. All, all, all of y'all are thinking it. All of you all want to know his thoughts on the new trilogy. I know it. I know you guys are thinking it. It's I know it. I think he could have told us. My I think he kind of did. Yeah. I'll tell you my new thoughts on the new ones. Let me let me finish this awesome <laughs> bit because it's better than yeah. the Avenger they've done. Yeah. So our hotel models in the like around all this stuff. And I look over to this table and I see like eight R2 heads, like the like the top half of the domes of R2. And only half like and there's a guy with a a paintbrush and he's painting the blue and i'm like yeah. are you fucking, are you fucking making r2 heads right now he's like yeah i was like oh my god i was like wait a minute what is oh my god what is happening and then i looked down and there's the actual body of r2 
with the molded seat that Kenny Baker sits in. Oh my wow. God. And it has a placard on it as a referencing. It says hero Kenny Baker molded seat. Do not touch. So of course I touched it. Um, <laughs> of course. I mean, we it's hard to. I touched it. I went ding. I went bloop right on. I went, I touched R2. And so that, that was a very unique experience. And then awesome. like, you know, get to go to, uh, but I, the one thing that's cool, that's just in the model shop. I've never been in the, in the, in the vault, uh, which is up at Skywalker ranch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I've been to Skywalker ranch, which is bitching too, but uh, a buddy of mine who worked production on Phantom Menace and who's in it three times as an extra, but he had to make a run as a PA to go to the vault and like, you have to like take all your clothes off and like, get a cavity search and all this stuff to go in and out of there, I guess. But he walking, he's I've like, that's, that. that's where the cool shit is. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, he's like, I went in there, and, you know, and I had to get something and they handed it to me and I was walking in, and everything's like in, you know, sealed, hermetically sealed and on shelves. And it, it looks mm-hmm. rad. He says, and he, and he goes, and Han Solo's gun belt. And but we're sitting on a shed. He was like, that blew my mind. I was like, wow. that would have been rad. So th- those are cool stuff. Despite some of the movies are bad, all that stuff's cool. Um, but Stephanie, you were you were like, what? You were you saying? <laughs> yeah, she, she like, thinks I to... sequel trilogies. Like, yeah, we, we all... That's fine. They're... And now we there's like like a thing them. online I'm reading, like people are okay with Christensen now. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. I, I mean, oh, yeah. I'm not okay with him. Like, I just, the movie's like, Give these people something to. You had you and McGregor for crying out loud. I know. And couldn't give them one line of decent <laughs> dialogue to say, except "hello there." <laughs> Hello there. Hello there. Uh, and please don't put. Don't Samuel Jackson doesn't need to be in the movie. In, in that takes you out of a movie, like it, if it literally takes you out of the universe you're in, like it's the wrong guy. And I love Samuel Jackson. It's Samuel and Jackson. Yeah. Even mm-hmm. Jimmy Smith yeah. does that to me. It's like, uh, what? What is Jimmy Smith doing here? Like, it, I have yeah. to admit, yeah, yeah. it, it kind of does for me too. And I yeah, love okay. Jimmy Smith. Mm-hmm. I love him Boy, in Sons of Anarchy. He he works there. Oh my gosh, he was he awesome. Works yeah. there well, he's in that yep. in that space. But what's that, Howard? Mama? Yeah. Yeah, Mama. <laughs> hey, Mama. I love that yeah. character. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you Stockton. Long. Like you are like Sons yeah, of Anarchy. Yeah, LA Law. Was great. That's where it takes place. Yep. Yeah. Uh LA Law was he's great in LA Law and uh, he's great on <laughs> NYPD Blue. Boom. Mm-hmm. Bobby Simone dies. That's a tearjerker. I yeah. Just, I watched all of NYPD Blue last year, like from episode one to the end. It killed me. Um and Rick Schroeder was fantastic. I was gonna say show. Ricky, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they did him wrong, like when they killed him off, and there's like they rolled him up on a carpet, but that was tear drinking too. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, what's our next what's our next tangent? Like we did that. Do you want to stay for trivia? Is that <laughs> oh that's right? You had tri- boy, like did I just ramble and like kill your <laughs> no, 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 we wanted to talk this about for a while. Yeah, this is enrapturing, so it's all all right, yeah, we, yeah, we know yeah, you I, we know you don't like the prequels, but <laughs> what did you what did you think about the the, the Disney trilogy, the newest mm-hmm. trilogy, because we are not we are not. This fans is a safe space. This is a safe space, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you said the Disney trilogy, which means the 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 Force Awakens, Last Jedi, and yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Rise of Western mm-hmm. Faces. Yeah. Um, Rise, Rise of Palpatine. Palpatine. Yeah. I I will I will say this. I I was really excited for Force Awakens. I thought mm-hmm. new technical. Then I saw the story, and it's the mm-hmm. same fucking story. Mm-hmm. I hated, don't even get me on the actual physics of making a plasma cannon out of a planet that you're sucking star material. Like, it wouldn't have, never mind. It wouldn't uh-huh. happen. And <laughs> how, do you, how do you fucking aim it? Yeah. I know. Um, <laughs> there, it would have been better if you can't aim it and you only get like one shot like every 15 days at a certain thing. And like, but right. you can't take star material. It would melt, it would melt your entire planet before it got there. Yeah. Did yeah. anybody go to seventh grade that's writing these movies? <laughs> Um, no, they didn't. No, no probably no. not. No, but I thought Force Awakens was a punt. I thought it was a punt. Like they didn't take no. any risks. They didn't do anything cool. No. Um, they had a lot of stormtroopers on trampoline, like with you know trampolines. Um, <laughs> eh. I like Ray. I do like Daisy Riddle. Uh, Daisy uh, Daisy Ridley. Um, I like the character. I like Boyega. Um, and Oscar Isaac is cool. I, I like those characters. Um, I just didn't like the stories around him. I, I thought Force Awakens was a punt. Ryan Johnson's thing was a total like tale. Like what? I thought it was cool for what it did, but meh. 
And then Rise of Skywalker was like, like you guys should have just stopped. You know where they should have stopped? With what I think is arguably the most Star Wars movie of all the Star Wars movies, and that's Rogue One. Really? Rogue One. Mm. See, I don't, I don't mind Rogue One either myself, but uh, I, I, I yeah, think I, it's, it's the most Star Wars movie of almost all the Star Wars movies because it has the original. It's the camera work. It's the grittiness. It's the, it, it's the, it's the dirtiness. Yeah, there's great effects, but it's a little more authentic. Mm-hmm. And, and, and down down and dirty some of the stuff is eh. um but i thought it was real i thought there was an impending menace i liked that it led up i didn't like the uh, uh you know whatever the the cgis of tarkin and of leia i thought you could have done those maybe in reflections or just like one quick thing to be out and be like oh my god that was great yeah. i didn't like the whole thing of like then i'm looking right in your face yeah mm-hmm. i'm like oh this is like right. the same tech it, like it sucks Mm-hmm. Um, and it takes me out, but because mm-hmm. Rogue One they made old purposefully, and they should have done that with every single one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. they should have yeah. made the look and production design and the feel of all three of the of the the ending ones just like Rogue One. Yeah, I I I, I like your analogy that that uh, Force Awakens was a punt, and I think if they passed the ball to Ryan Johnson, he just popped it. He's like, hey. mm-hmm. yeah, he's like, watch this. <laughs> yeah. <Pop it. laughs> And then JJ had to come back and put duct tape on it and blow it back up again and just try to figure out how to work it. Yeah. And that's what it was. was. Yeah. They 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 played ball control, you know, and just kind of meh. I'm like, wow. Because they know they're going to make it. They don't care. Well, on the crime of not getting the three together, I mean, that that was just wrong. Oh, yeah. That was absolutely lost. Yeah. I'll tell you the one thing now, granted, we can't prognosticate. Mm-hmm. And of course, we lose Carrie Fisher like shortly after. Right? Mm-hmm. So now, whatever grand plans you have, or you know, you have to undo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if you're a, a ballsy writer, uh, I thought one of the 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 best thing in Last Jedi was when Holdo goes to light speed and takes out the giant cruiser. That was a fantastic effect, and using a ship in light speed as a weapon was a phenomenal idea because we, we we don't see that right. Um. But you actually get alluded to it in Star Wars, the first one, which is called Star Wars when I was a kid, not A New Hope. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, when he says, you know, flying through hyperspace and like Dustin Crop's boy, you know, you can fly too close to a supernova or bounce off, you know, whatever. It's like it's dangerous. Now we get a payoff from that Han Solo line when Holdo uses a ship as a weapon and blasts and, and saves everybody. That should have been Leia. That would yeah. have been yeah. a, a great Ballsy thing. A ballsy thing because yeah, we know this guy. Like we're these, we already killed Han Solo because mm-hmm. it's the only reason Harrison Ford would come back to do the movie. He's like, I've been trying if to kill this kill character off, yeah. since Empire, mm-hmm. right? He's like, you, you got to kill, kill me off, him. yeah, kill me off, like kill this character, yeah. And they do. Eh, it was okay. Um, that the fact that his son killed him, like that was that was cool, not cool, but you know, it was intriguing. <laughs> Uh, but I thought, Le- like, Leia, that, that would have been her role. Like, I didn't agree with Leia allowing Holdo to do that. Because she said, I'm going to stay. Someone's got, and she's like, no, we can't ask you. She's like, you're not. Go. Leia should have, you know, tripped her and pushed her into the other one and gone and sealed off and done it. So that would have been an epic way to go. But they were like, oh, we get Carrie Fisher for the next five movies. Like, oh, oh, do you? Mm-hmm. Right. You know, I'm not trying to say, I'm not, not trying to Monday morning quarterback that the fact that you you know we the whole world loses Carrie Fisher as a human being, but mm-hmm. even if she's still alive today, like kill that character in that way, that'd been fantastic. And yeah. then Luke can come out of nowhere and be like, "Well, shit, everybody's gone. It's up to me to get this back and pass the torch, and then I'll go." Fantastic. But then I didn't know like you know force ghosts could like control weather and shit. I was like, then why <laughs> should that be able to do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're right there with you. Yeah, why don't yeah. we just do this? Like, it's the same thing that gets me about Lord of the Rings at the end when they went through all of this shit, <laughs> and then all you had to do was go get like some ghosts to do it for you. It was like, why didn't you do that on day one? Right, right. <laughs> all over. Bye. Let's go back to the Shire and have some ale. Yeah, you know, it's like. You know, Sean Bean wouldn't have died. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but 
but he, he has, has to. to. Anyway, he does. Oh, there's Trish. Yes, I'm, I'm rambling again. What's the Trish? <laughs> no, Sean Bean always dies. Good stuff. Sean Bean always dies. He has to die. It's in his contracts. It, it is. Yeah. It is. Uh, <laughs> go. What's the? Okay. Start the. I'll 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 referee. <laughs> Okay, I think Greg uh, went to the restroom. He said, "Be right back." He's controlling the trivia, but he went ahead and put it on screen right here. Monster Squad trivia. So uh, I need to get the link from him as well. Of course, he. Yeah, I'll, to... I'll read him since I am not going to be participating because mm -hmm. I created the question. Because you created the trivia. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's only 15. Um, you know, I didn't want to go too long with them, mm -hmm. and I really thought about them. I was out on the back deck with a drink and just, hey, that would be a good question. That would be a good one. So, were you drinking a pumpkin beer? No, I was. It was a work night, so I was drinking ah, a soda. So ah. it's a work night, so he's drinking straight Jack Daniels. Yeah, sure. there you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> We've been like, doing. Uh, I have a Shiner Bach in my hand. So. <laughs> hey. Oh, do you? Is it... sorry, yeah. Lone Star, right? Oh. Hey, uh, Shiner Bach, uh, Ruby Red. Uh, great. That's a good beer. That's a that's a, that's a fun refreshing that beer. It's yeah, it's got ruby red grapefruit in the shine. It's pretty good. Interesting. And I'm well, not a big drinker anymore. I don't do it. I'm not good at it any longer. <laughs> well, Jeff actually has a series called the Cantina, and I just started one called the Tavern. And sometimes we get on there together and we just record. We're trying something new, mainly craft beers. So uh -huh. that's one we need to try, Jeff. Yeah, yeah I'll, have, not, it, I'll have it's, to do it. Yeah, it's not. Like independent, super crap, but it's a different and it's a smaller run. It's it's super refreshing. Like it's like I'm the nerd. I, I I'm I'm the weirdo that would that likes super light, crisp beer, like poured over shaved ice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but anyway, I'm yeah. I'm thoroughly weird. That's why I'm drinking water right now because Jason was over here today. We did we recorded four episodes. We did four different beers. One of them <laughs> oh, was yeah, a bomb. Right. One of them was a bomber. So we were like, we won't finish the whole thing. We drank the whole thing. <laughs> and then, and then the last beer we had was eleven percent alcohol by volume, so Ooh, it was quite. Yeah. It was a yeah, wow, was, yeah. <laughs> it's just wait to see this one. It's gonna be. It's very interesting. Very very interesting. Uh, Greg put the link to the trivia in the chat. It's also in the private chat, Steph. If you want to grab it too. Oh, I already, I already did. I oh, you did. I scanned the little. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. Yeah, you can scan yeah. scan the code and join on your phone. We we found this site. Crowd Crowd Per is the name of the site. P U R R, and uh, we've been using it for trivia ever since. And we do Star Trek uh, watch parties on Sunday nights and Tuesday nights. And the following watch party, Greg will actually make trivia and yep. uh, game for the last two episodes we watched the previous episode. So uh, cool. it's been it's been very fun. And actually, this Monday night on my channel, we're going to start our very first trivia game stream. So we'll, it'll be all trivia. Mm -hmm. We'll have like oh, five different categories. Ten questions each. It's we're gonna do it every Monday night. It's we're just we want to try to do something different. So yeah, Sounds very like fun. Yeah. yeah. Now when Absolutely. you say Star Trek, so which which series? All uh, the original, original series. Really? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've I've never seen it, so this is my I'm my first time watching it through. So okay. Uh, I'm a, a original series. It's great. Mm -hmm. Shatner, Nimoy, Kelly, awesome people. Um, I've met Michelle Nichols. She's that's awesome. I've uh, been to conventions with her. Uh, I'm a TNG fan. Nice. I like TNG. Yeah. I was actually shooting a, uh, I was doing a television show on the Paramount lot uh, for two seasons, the same inaugural first two seasons of TNG. So I would ride my bike over and visit Will. And I I met Patrick Stewart in the makeup trailer. Wow. Uh, wow. Uh, while they were like, no one knew who he was and like the show hadn't come out. <laughs> and, and then like I went on the set and I was like, oh, this is the bridge of the new enterprise. I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. Um, and another Monster Squad tie-in with TNG is uh, Will Wheaton obviously became Wesley Crusher, but mm -hmm. my man Ryan Lambert uh, screen tested with the network and was wearing the uniform on the bridge of the Enterprise on the stage and was almost Wesley Crusher. Wow. That played Rudy wow. in the Monster Squad because uh, they were thinking of going in another direction with Wesley. As like I would have a, loved that, like like a cool <laughs> like a cool rebellious kid, instead of the 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 mm -hmm. smart kid, mm -hmm. and uh, wow. it would have you know he would have been he still would have been super smart, but he would have been sort of like the the, the mm -hmm. punk rock kid on the on the interview, which awesome. would have been what a great idea. Um, and Ryan would have been awesome. Yeah, that would have been cool. Mm -hmm. um, that would have been and then of course I don't know if anybody does or not know since you said original series. Um, 
I was TJ Hooker's son on the show. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't either. <laughs> so there's some tie in for you. I didn't either. Awesome. Dang. Yeah. Uh, they brought the kid. They know there was always a storyline that, that TJ Hooker had kids mm -hmm. and um, one season they decided to bring them because they, they lived in Seattle or Portland or something. And uh, um, of course, TJ Hooker's it was Southern California somewhere. And um, they would fly, like we fly down and visit our dad for the, like the weekend or something. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. uh, we did, we did three or four or five episodes and we were supposed to do more. Like we were in a contract for like two seasons and the uh, TJ Hooker got canceled mm -hmm. uh, right when we started doing the show. And what was interesting is the series got canceled on whatever network it originated on. I can't mm -hmm. ever remember, but it got picked up by another network. And so TJ Hooker went like one or two more seasons, but they decided to not go with the uh, kids. Like they, uh, but how contracts work, it's a time thing. So I was under contract with TJ Hooker, a show that I was no longer ever going to do, but I was unable to work for like six more months or uh -huh. four months or something until that contract expired. And I couldn't do any other show. And I got offered another show that I was unable to do because I was under contract with TJ uh. Hooker. Oh, <laughs> and that show was called Growing Pains. So oh, <laughs> oh wow! Oh, oh small, wow! That small little TV call. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Show. Yeah. Uh, show. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that was uh, that was that was a fun that was a fun anecdote to to look back on. Wow, Definitely. that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> amazing yeah. how things. Work am I, out. Yeah, are, am I holding up trivia again? It's, it's not my. It's oh, not no. me, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I've read your IMDb. I don't know how many times, and I don't. That's that's amazing. TJ mm -hmm. Hooker. Yeah, there's a. I was the what everybody loves to talk about with me is that I I either guest starred or had a role like on a ton of awesome shows, right? <laughs> um, but my television career was, I, in I did five or six TV shows that went one season instead of one show that went six years that everybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah and uh, cool. yeah, that's it. That's interesting. <laughs> so that's that's my tell but i guess start on a lot of cool stuff which is great. right so, um and and some of it's like people like ryan lambert you know you know cool cat rudy and some of his favorite things are my, he, he'll be watching old like me tv at night and be like dude <laughs> really <laughs> and uh you know i've done some cool stuff i've done some cool stuff i can't complain you know I'm, yeah I, I chopped down a tree with mr t um i i rode in kit um you know, it's, you it's, Kit? It's, yeah, oh, I mean, yeah. I, uh, I sat awesome. and did scenes with Kit, so I yep. did an episode of Knight Rider. Yeah, and, I, I um, oh, that's cool. It's uh, and then it's neat. And then one of my favorite things I ever did, uh, it was a PPS show called MathNet, and it was a play on Dragnet, but <laughs> the investigators solved the crimes by using math. It was educational. And it was really kind of, it's, it's so corny and lame, but it's very informative and educational. And uh, it's on YouTube. It's, MathNet's a, go watch MathNet. Like all their episodes are on, on, on YouTube now. It's fantastic. And yeah, I want we'll to do like, that. You know what? This is such a good show. Like, MathNet, MathNet needs its own like podcast. Like you guys should do that. <laughs> like someone should do that. Um, That's but great. it was one of those original things, like, you know, sort of like, you know, we had Schoolhouse Rock and, 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 you know, shows that, Talk the kids how to do stuff or count or you know, but this was a little more, you know, grown up. <laughs> it was right. like, like for like nine year olds. But uh yeah, there's like, okay, if we're driving down the parade route at two miles an hour, how long is it gonna take us to get to the end? <laughs> like you're like, wait a minute, I gotta do math on Saturday morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, that just, sucks. Like, Who wants to do that? <laughs> oh, oh man. So oh, one other man. thing, uh E.T. video game commercial. Oh yeah, you know so that's the other uh, that's the other like claim to fame. Um, yeah, <laughs> so he questions it. <laughs> it's uh, this is this is actually a cool story because they they talk about it in Zach Penn's doc. You know the game over talk about it, the end of Atari and they're digging up the games in the landfill yeah. in New Mexico. Yeah. Um, they actually show that commercial and I'm I'm in that I'm in that yeah. doc, but. Um, Nice. That That's was just awesome. a. It was a. It was a regular commercial edition. ET had just come out, obviously that year or whatever year before, and they were, unbeknownst to anybody else, they were rushing the game. Like normally, it takes five or six yeah. months 
mm-hmm. uh, for that game developer for Atari, you know, that made like Yars Revenge and all the other good Atari stuff. Um, that doc is fascinating, by the way. Um, and they, but they were rushing it out to get it in Christmas. And we shot this in like November and they only gave the guy like five weeks to make a game that he know they normally, he needs five or six months to make a game. And that's why the right. game sucked. And like, yeah. if you fell in the pit you never got out, like you had to shut the game off. Right. And um, there's actually some cool, like Easter, there's an Indiana Jones Easter egg in E.T. the video game. Wow. Which I didn't know until I watched that doc, but you know, they recreated like the, the backyard for E.T. and throw the ball in the shed. And instead of the ball coming back out, the video game flies out on this corny little kid. <laughs> E.T. <love. laughs> um, you know, with my, you know, short legs and, you know, mop top hair. It was, it was great. But <laughs> so I do this commercial. I do this commercial and, you know, fast forward 35 years from that or something. Mm-hmm. And I have, I literally have been asked like in comments on the YouTube channel, like, how do I feel being the reason that a billion dollar company went in the shitter? <laughs> oh like, my God. Like I didn't end Atari. Like yeah, I was, you didn't, didn't do anything. <laughs> you didn't do anything. Like some guy was like, yeah, I bet that kid killed himself or something. I'm like, no. I, and so I'm right here. Like, you, <laughs> like, you have to, re- you have to respond. And yeah. so I chimed in and I go, no, I'm actually doing okay. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> that's but great. The, the yeah. great the great thing about that is i got this uh um there was a you know because et everybody's riding their bikes that's a it's a it's a neighborhood bikes movie yeah and they mm-hmm. actually shot et the movie in my neighborhood where i was in one i grew, where one of the neighborhoods i grew up in wow and one of my houses is in the background and uh but you know where they're going down the the housing pads and mm-hmm. the bikes and chase something you know like we invented that we invented that like we did that shit we were, like we did that on our dirt bikes like right thomas howell didn't invent that we did <laughs> exactly and, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. it, uh, but it was awesome because now there's houses there but that was up in my neighborhood up in porter ranch mm-hmm. california and um so i take people on like an et tour <laughs> people freak out when you know they go down the tree line street where they first fly in the bikes and they're like oh my god this is it i was like yeah my house is right here <laughs> yeah and, well you know uh, it's you know gorgeous. what they filmed in Stockton, Andre, right? Indiana Jones, that's it's at the University of the Pacific. It has yeah. that architecture yeah. that looks like Ivy League yeah. schools. So they that actually is, filmed the scenes in Stockton. Yeah, that is wow. UP, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, the, uh, so they had this bike on the set of the commercial. And I asked if, like, if there, could I buy that bike or could I have that bike? And they were like, it's a rental prop and we can't, you know, you can't have the bike, you know, because it's not ours. I was like, oh, okay. But on the last day, like we shot this commercial for like four days because it was a much longer thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, they, the director wheeled in like this brand new Diamondback dirt bike. There was like a $400 Diamondback at that time from like the biggest bike store in, in, in LA. Mm-hmm. And uh, they gave me this bike and it was gorgeous. And I had it for like 10 years after that. And, um, but, and then the Atari rep gave me uh, a 2600. And said, and by the way, I'm shipping you to your house every game that Atari's ever made. And I was like, oh my God, that's great. She never sent me jack shit. Oh. Oh. Uh, but I got the bike. That's all I care about. Um, but, but what's amazing thing that ties in with, you know, we were talking about the documentary uh, and this ET Atari game, there's actually a tie in because uh, about three years ago, I was at a convention and my Twitter started blowing. Like, my Twitter doesn't blow up. Right, mm-hmm. it, it, it gets some action if I say something halfway funny, and that's about <laughs> it. And uh, you know, also like, just my Twitter's going nuts. I'm like, what is happening? And I was like, someone's got to be confusing me with somebody else. But then I traced it back to the original tweet was from Adam F. Goldberg, who created the show The Goldbergs, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. in school. And he had put, and I was at a convention, so I had my phone and like on the whole time. I'm signing autographs all day. And um, he had asked, hey, does it, anybody in, you know, his, uh, his, he called them gold nerds, like his army is called the gold nerds, which is fantastic. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's like, does anybody, can anybody identify any of these two people in this old commercial? Cause we want to use it on the show, but we have to get, we have to get signed off on it. And it was the ET Atari commercial. And all of his people, like a bunch of people respond. It's like, dude, everybody knows that's, the kid in the ET tournament is Andre Gower from the Monster Squad. And I was like, actually, I don't think everybody knows that, but thank you. And so I tweeted all the way back and got in touch with Adam F. Goldberg. And they're like, oh my God, do you, um, you know, do you mind if we use it? Can you, can we send you a talent release? We'll pay you. Um, I'm like, you're going to 
pay me. Uh, they actually technically have to. So I'm getting like a sad contract sent to me. I go like to use just the old commercial. And uh, it, it's a fantastic residual. I just cashed one the other day. And no, um, <laughs> so, and then I'm like, well, by the way, Adam F. Goldberg, someone I don't know. However, I know his, like what his interests are. And I'm making a documentary about an old movie that I have to be in, but it's about the failed box office. It's kind of pop culture called Monster Squad. And his assistant was like, um, I think that's something that he would probably be open to. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I was, he's actually on my list to cold, cold call or try to get in contact, but, but you beat me to it. And she's like, send me an email and I'll forward it to him. Long story short goes, he writes me back like later that day. And it's like, thanks you know, for signing off. But wait, you're making a movie about, you realize it's one of my all-time favorite movies. Like, I didn't know that. So we mm-hmm. have to get together. He ends up being in my documentary with a fantastic nice. interview, but he wanted, and he also wanted to be involved as much as possible. So uh, the the trailer that you watched was cut by his guy, Jeff Yorks, who's an amazing uh, uh, editor, but we did his interview on his set. And so we're doing Adam's doc interview in TV show, fake Adam's bedroom on the Goldberg's set. Mm-hmm. Sony. Wow. And so we just all connect. It was really, was great. But what I didn't realize is that he, the show says Nards all the time. He writes it in scripts <laughs> all the time. And he, one of my favorite things, I'm going to be a spoiler for the doc, but you'll dig it. Uh, he had his editor for the Goldberg's gave him a side project and it said, I want you to send Andre a super cut of every time a character on the Goldberg that said Nard. And like the last, <laughs> and like the last two That's probably years. quite a few. And yeah, it was like, it was like so we ended up getting like, uh, we cut it down to like a, a 12, a 12 Nards super cut of all the characters <laughs> of the Goldberg saying Nard. And I'm like, I, this is amazing. And it's documentary oh, gold. And I'm, I mean, I'm just, I, I love Adam F. We're, we're pals now. And uh, we awesome. get to have lunch every once in a while. I've been to his new office and uh, it, he's just a great guy. And, um, you know, so I'm, I'm happy that he's a part of the doc and, and we get to celebrate fantastic. that, but, you know, so celebrate him. He's, he's a cool dude, and, but that kind of full circle with the ET Atari thing. Cause that got us yeah. together. That got yeah. us together. It's, it's all awesome. Connected. It's all connected. Absolutely. That's, really That's fantastic. I, I love the Goldbergs. It's so Except cool. for the Ewoks. They can suck it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Greg, George. Are you ready to start the trivia? I am ready. Oh, yeah. Right, so, Greg, yeah. you're going to control it, and I'm just going to read it, right? Yes. Okay. And Greg, excellent. Greg, are you? I forgot. Are you playing, or did you cheat or read the read the questions? I did not read the questions, so I'll be playing. Ah, okay. awesome! You and actually probably, get to play this time. Probably suck. Probably suck. And All everybody right. in the chat uh, looks like I think there's a lot of people already. Uh, I know that Megatron is going for another low score, of course. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Every time, saying I'm ready to. I'm ready He's to ready to lose, lose. always. <laughs> Maybe next time his same will be different because now it's baby Megatron. He was also, what was the one before? Nudist Megatron Nudist. before this one. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And then stunning and brave Megatron before that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's, let's uh, see let's how this goes. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm excited for this. I'm excited. Thanks for being here again, Andre. We really appreciate having you on, man. No, thank you. Sorry. I've been <laughs> rambling, telling like, oh, no. no, this is no. great <laughs> story. No, it's it's been, been fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to do the countdown, Greg? There, it goes. there we go. <laughs> it's the going. first time it was a minute long for the one trivia. I was like, I think Rhino or somebody was like, why is it one minute? <laughs> <laughs> I listened. Like I listened. So impatient. Oh, but it's, it's, it's like the Christmas tree countdown with Dwight in the office. Like, why are you oh, starting at such high of a number? <laughs> 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 okay. All right. What film did Phoebe use as evidence that the U.S. was at war with Vietnam? Full Metal Jacket, Platoon, Rambo, or Apocalypse Now? Good question. Wow. I know this one. Wow, good question. And you, you wrote all these last night? Uh, Yeah, yeah, last night. Wow, fantastic, fantastic. Interesting. Yeah, I think I, I think I got it. I think so. Okay. <laughs> we shall see. We'll see. And the answer is Rambo. Yes, it is. There we go. Awesome. Awesome. 
And this is kind of like an NTN trivia. If you ever played a trivia at a pub, like Andre, it's I, the quicker I, you answer, the more points you get, kind of thing. I caught that. Yeah. And I am, yeah. I, I have played in, I'm a trivia dork. Sorry. As well. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in the league. And I did know that answer, by the way, but I, I would be cheating if I, if I <laughs> in the foyer <laughs> of the shadow and, brick and, house, which monster is approaching the boys from their left? Their left. Mm hmm. Damn, now I gotta like. All right. When their back is to the statue. Uh, oh, I okay. think. Okay, yeah, because I'm like, I'm like, where were they? Where's the statue? Who was yeah. on the. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Wow. That's a, good, not... that's a good question. Wow. That's tough. That's yeah. a tough one. Yeah. Oh, I know. Oh. I think I'm wrong, actually. Shit. We just watched the, we just I watched know. the movie. I know. It's like you got to like, ah, I sit like literally I'm thinking guessing. of myself at like, my back against the statue, like which side? Yeah. Oh, pretty split. Oh, it is. It is. It is. Oh, dang. Yeah. Yeah, 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 they came Damn. from the right. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Because, okay, now I'm seeing the vampires came from the, <laughs> in front of them and Wolfman was on the right. Okay. Yep. Damn. Damn it. There, there's there's a fun tidbit about about that shot that you're talking about where mm -hmm. like when the lightning when the lightning strikes outside the lights in the hallway actually go on instead of going off like in most <laughs> movies. It's just a fun thing. Fun, fun I never tidbit. noticed that. I didn't notice that either. <laughs> I didn't notice that either. What kind of candy bar does Rudy force EJ to eat? Ah. Product placement. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Baby Ruth, Snickers, Mars Bar, or a Butterfinger? I think I got this one. Yeah. I think it's, yeah. <laughs> you think it's what? Give me the answer. I'm not giving you the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say it out loud. Well, it's hitting low enough points. Hoping this one brings me back. Come on. Top two. It's kind of like one of those, uh, you know, you got kind of start to limit the answers. Like, which wasn't that one? It wasn't that one. Okay. Mm -hmm. what, yeah. Ooh. It was a tough one, but it, yeah, it was Snickers. It is it's Snickers. Snickers. That is correct. Yes, yes, yes. Ooh, we have a Ooh, new, new leader. New person. Yes, we do. Ooh. My nerdy home is in the lead. That's me. Yes, it is. And. <laughs> Megatron, why are you not close. why are you not losing again? <clears throat> One day he's gonna win this by accident. Ready for the next, Greg? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What does Sean call Wolfman before hitting him with a stick? I couldn't tell what the stick was. <laughs> was it a baseball bat or a hockey stick? Or... It, it was. It was a baseball bat. Okay, that's my thought. Can you give us the answer right now? <laughs> I, I could, yes. <laughs> Fangy, fur face, stink breath, or asshole? Ooh. Yeah, Megatron, you did almost win the Star Wars one last time, didn't you? Oh, you should have been here for that, Andre. That Star Wars quiz was rough. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> wow! It was I, I want. I want. It, I want the. Is it all Star Wars or just? It was. Uh, it was a new ha uh, based on a New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. Mm -hmm. It was. I would. It was I would, rough. I, I would take that. I would. I would like to. Uh, yeah, I'd like to do those. Because I had. I had the book. There was a trivia book that a kid wrote back in. It was asshole. I wrote that. It, asshole. It Wolfman is asshole. <clears throat> Wolfman is as hope. There, there's a funny BTS story with that scene because yeah. it uh, had the bat and it's a, it's, it was a it was a foam foam rubber bat. Mm -hmm. And we go in a thing and Fred's like, "Okay, you're gonna come in here. You're gonna turn around. You're gonna say, hey, asshole. You're gonna swing, but you know, you know, you obviously can't hit Carl, who's in the Wolfman suit. And, you know, play it because the camera's on the other side. It'll look like you hit him. And of course, I'm a I'm a I'm a I, I played a lot." by myself as a kid because I didn't like playing with other kids because they would do it wrong. And um, <laughs> but I, I, you know, I was very inventive and I would do worlds. And I would do sounds. And I would do characters and everything. And, you know, you shoot them ups and, you know, you know, making gun sounds and blow cars going by. And so I go up and we're rolling the first take and I go up and I say, Hey, asshole. And I went, 
<laughs> and Fred would cut. Then we cut, and Fred was like, "Hey, okay, that was good. The blog was great, but we we don't need the sound effect. We can add that later." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, okay, my bad. <laughs> I don't know why I made this. I was totally stupid." But they uh, did that on lightsaber practice in in uh, the Phantom yeah. Menace as well. Yeah, Phantom so. Menace, yeah, trying to make him annoyed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so fun. That's hilarious. That is hilarious. Wow. The problem is, this is a quote. You need to fill in the blank. The problem is, blank year old dead guys don't get up and walk away by themselves. <laughs> well, this not that year old dead guy is going to get up for a second. I'll be right back. Okay. okay. Four thousand, two thousand, three thousand, or five thousand. <clears throat> Yeah, Angel's driving for sure, and uh, I'm I'm definitely cool with that. I definitely want to watch this movie again. Really, soon. <laughs> love this movie so much. <clears throat> love it. Yeah, so far the yeah. questions I yeah. think you could get, you know, just by kind of watching the movie. No special the one, knowledge. <laughs> the, the one where you were like, "What saw? Which monsters coming from one direction?" I'm like, "Oh mm -hmm. shit, what?" <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, that was tough. That was tough. Ooh, very split on the answer. Very, very split. split. 2000. 2000. Yep. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yes, Trey, we, we do. We've got Andre here. Yes. Oh. Jeff moves into the lead. That's what happened. I do that sometimes too, uh, Angel Straven. I second guess myself a lot of times. Question six, which installment of the fictional horror movie franchise Groundhog Day did Sean want to see? <laughs> oh, my Ooh. God. <sighs> Come on. Um, and I, I have almost like, I don't want to call it photographic because it's listening, but I just remember <laughs> dialogue. So I didn't even have to look this one up when I wrote Yeah, you do. You, you, that's why you trounced me in Star Trek. For <laughs> <day>. <laughs> there are the numbers. I got that one win, and I will never get it again. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say probably not. Dude. I think I got this because I think I can hear Sean say it as, yeah, he's talking to his dad. Yeah. It's a, it's a good question. It's a good question. Yeah. But he mentions other ones, which is screwing me up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then two years later, yeah. Bill Murray's Groundhog Day came out. So, it's, yeah. <laughs> two years later, yeah. Very different sounding film. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. definitely different. <laughs> Ooh. Pretty divided Ooh. here. Someone's going to get some points here. Yeah, oh. one person. I got it. Wow. I got it. Because yeah, I could hear him just like you, Tim. I could hear him say it. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I've I've always wanted to, uh, I want someone to make that movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Jeff would um, love that. Yeah. Uh, th they, uh, I don't know if it was Fright Rags or somebody actually put out a movie poster t shirt of Groundhog Day Part 12. Oh I think gosh. it was Fright Rags. Yeah. It's, it it's an yeah. awesome t shirt. And I would mm -hmm. actually, because um, I don't, <laughs> maybe it's that I don't walk around in Monster Squad gear. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, um, uh, I have been asked, I, I wore a Stephen King rule shirt. Uh, once um, at the very first Alamo draft house thing that kicked all this shit off for the last 50 years. <laughs> um, but uh, I would, I would wear that groundhog day. I got to call Friday. Oh, yeah. so I was like, do you, I need, I need one. Like I've seen oh, yeah. people in it and I've taken pictures with people mm -hmm. and I'm like, I actually kind of want that. shirt. <laughs> I got, I got to try to find it. Yeah. I would wear that. Yeah. The monster squad went on their site right now. It's like, they only have a small and medium. So I missed that run. Unfortunately, they, they, whatever mm -hmm. they, if they do something, monster squad, it just, it, same with Mondo. It just it disappeared. It's absolutely it's gone. Mm -hmm. And the yep. Fright Rags people are awesome. So uh, I know yeah. Fright Rags shirt on right now. Yeah, yeah. If if you're listening, Fright Rags, I I, I still love you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> they make fantastic stuff. They really do. Question seven: What was one of the clubs Fat Kid <sighs> said they should form instead of a Monster Squad? Just Good one question. of the clubs you need here. Great Oops. scene. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was a good scene. I love I love that scene. Oh, 
That's yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> that is a good question. That is a really good question right there. Yeah. Good job with these, Tim. Good job. Thank you. See, D is the one I'd want to join. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Correct answer. I hope everyone. Well, it's pretty split. It's very split. Yeah. Mm. Mm, math. Math, math squad. squad. We could solve math, math problems. Math squad. Yeah, because you said nature squad as well, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah. And yeah. it's actually it's 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 a genius bit of writing because it almost seems like a gaffe on Brent's part when he says, you know, we could join we could join math squad or nature squad. He goes, uh, you know, we could look at rocks or collect birds. <laughs> <laughs> it, but that, I think that, that was actually on the page. I think so. It was genius. It was, it was like nervous, kid, right? Because yeah. he's nervous. But it, yeah. it's usually an actor's, you know, mess up. Like when you you jump mm -hmm. in yeah. like that, yeah. Like like William H Macy and Boogie Nights. But um, that. Uh, it, but I love I love that line. It's yeah. he's, he's, that's, he's that's so, fantastic. He's, he's, he's great. It's fantastic. I joined Nature School. I might join Math Club too. Oh yeah. Question <laughs> eight, which was not one of the responses the boys gave when Rudy asked for the second way to kill a werewolf. Which one was not? God, it's like an SAT. Mm -hmm. I, I know. I know. <laughs> okay, I think I got it. I'm just literally hearing them say the the answers yeah. in yeah. my head. Yeah. <laughs> and you did just watch the movie. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that certainly does help. It's... Yeah, yeah. Probably gonna watch it again this week with my wife because she's never seen it. So nice. Mm -hmm. But she's much younger, so she that was not her time period. I understand. But and then you can watch the Squad Doc pre order at Amazon and iTunes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm getting good yeah, at this. Yeah, love I, it. Hate, I, I can't, I can't like wait till it gets here. I, actually, I hate when people do that shit. <laughs> but, uh, you're like, wait, you're kind of supposed to. But uh, electrocution. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make yep, that was not. Mm -mm. One of the, good question. Look at the geek blend. Oh dang, he's pulling away. Oh. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm doing good tonight. Last one I did not do. Get on. Ah! I'm giving him the answer. Can you not see that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm touching my nose. Like, it's like baseball. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yep. We got together before this, so we knew. It's yeah. a Houston Astros thing. All right, question nine. <laughs> what police code does Sean's father's partner call into dispatch when Dracula is Holy on the front shit. line? Oh, my God. Oh, wow. 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 He memorized. <laughs> that is oh, you have to that's another it. one I had memorized, you know, because the dialogue I probably saw this a hundred times in the 80s. So it's I think mm -hmm. I know this. Wow. But I'll I, I, I'll confirm once you see the options, course, you'll better, you'll get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I can't. I can't. No, I just had to take a shot in the dark on this one. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, <laughs> that's a good question. Deep Very cut. damn good. You got to throw a couple of hard ones in there, you know. Yes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Lisa didn't say what. Like, what was his badge number that you could see for five seconds? Yeah, like yeah. That. <laughs> that's something Greg would do. We got a ten thirty five. <laughs> Hey, and I then, got it right. Get out of there. Oh my God, Jeff! Really? <laughs> and then I get blown up. Oh crap! <laughs> uh, but speaking of like deep cuts like that, yeah. or the badge number, um, Dead Right Horror uh, Night is trivia. Uh, Dead Night Horror Trivia Night is they do that. Like Rebecca McKendry and a bunch of cool horror people in LA run that night, mm -hmm. and uh, they used to have it at a at a cafe, but then they moved it over to this kind of like a collectible shop. And they have teams like like all these genre, you know, filmmakers and like some serious people go to it. Like Mick Garrison, like they go to this thing and hang out. And nice. um, but wow. they ask real deep cut stuff like that. And I'm like, I can't. And it's all <laughs> horror. Like I, it's all horror. But like it's like what song was on the radio first when Adrian Barbeau was driving in the truck in the fog? Like what? It's like oh, huh? Shit. 
I was like, what? <laughs> Those kind of questions are like when I when I play trivia, I'm like, done. I'm not getting this one right. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah just I'll take a guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. God. All right. You're uh you're killing it there. Question 10. Which failed method of killing Dracula was not in the film? Hmm. Failed method of killing was not. This one, yeah, I think I got this one too. I think everybody should get this one. Yeah. <clears throat> I think so. Blake says he's been blindly guessing for about five questions now. <laughs> but it was your first time watching it too, Blake. So, I mean, yeah. Everybody. Good deal. Scene. Yep. Everybody did. Fantastic. You were paying Fantastic. attention. <clears throat> Absolutely. Wow. Can't get some wrong, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, I'll do this good for prequel trivia. This week. eleven. How many years before the current <laughs> events did the Von Helsing scene take place? Oh, the scary German guy read it out, said it out loud. And there's another couple places too you can find out. Mm-hmm. I, I think I got <laughs> Megatron. You're getting stuff right. I thought you were trying to like aim for the worst score again. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I think he's had the no. I don't. Yeah, he's had the worst score. I think he's like negative six thousand or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't think he's ever done that. Well, he didn't do that. No? <laughs> maybe two thousand. Maybe two thousand. Yeah. Oh, that's Ooh, it's, this is split. Yep. Mm -hmm. They blew it. 100 years. Oh. Yep. I actually got one wrong. <laughs> Doesn't help if I also got it wrong. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the that's one of the, the the things that I've enjoyed filling in some story uh that I think cuz everybody's you know we were talking about how pissed off this Dracula is and you know yeah. he, he he there's only that equilibrium every 100 years that the amulet can be destroyed and evil can kind of the balance will shift. Right. Um, a lot of people don't know, uh, you know, the movie opens with the crawl with the red kind of crawl. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, it's a, and at the end, you know, band of freedom fighters fight the force of evil, Van Helsing, whatever. And, uh, but at the end it says they blew it. And yeah. then we see the scene, they do it in the rigor reads a thing in the vortex and it cuts to us in the principal's office. No, no one ever knows how they blew it. Right. Unless you actually know the story or you've heard one of us talk about it or you watch the deleted scenes from the 20th anniversary DVD, they blew it because they actually chased down and captured Dracula in the forest and stake him. And then they go up in the castle to do the limbo thing mm -hmm. while they leave Dracula's body in a wagon with a red shirt. <laughs> and he stand there guarding the dead body of the vampire while they're going up and opening limbo and reading the, the spell. Well, out of the woods in the mist come three vampire brides and he stands up and shoots one of them with a crossbow. The other one's close to him. He grabs the stake and stakes her. And the third one's on him and is choking him. And he's like pressed up against him. He's about almost out of breath and is flailing around and his hand comes across the stake and he stakes her. Mm -hmm. And he's like, all right, I made it. But as we all know in vampire lore, when you unstake a staked vampire, he comes back to life. Oh, yeah. And so he undid Dracula and Wagon. And then Duncan sits up in the, and gives him a look. And obviously that red shirt is toast. And Dracula gets <laughs> yeah. away. And Dracula gets away. And that's how they blew it. But we don't ever mm -hmm. see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And oh. so our Dracula has been walking around for a hundred years waiting for the next equilibrium night. Mm -hmm. That's why he's so pissed. Wow. And that's why everybody's like, where did Dracula get dynamite? And I was like, you know what? I think he picked up like a box, like when they were building the Panama canal. 
Right. <laughs> like he just grabbed it and like carries around. <laughs> like, but that's why he's mad. Like Check he's like, I'm pissed. This is my time, and these you know these meddling kids are not going to get in my way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why. That's why he's mad to me. That's that's what I think. That's that's all. Sounds that good is, backstory. That that is awesome. Yeah. Monster Squad lore. Yeah. I love it. I love that. Ooh. Question twelve. Which fast food chain is shown or mentioned multiple times? I think you're doing the product placement. Like, you're getting paid? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this stream is not sponsored, not sponsored by any of by, these, yeah. these organizations. <laughs> Stephanie's like, there's no Whataburger in here. Different ones. I was like, it's either mm-hmm. in my mind. I I'm thinking this one, but I one of them's throwing me off. I don't so know. you, you see actually see it, John, with it on the roof, watching the movie, and then you see yep. it in the square. Yeah. It in is mm-hmm. BK. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Ah. Old school Burger King logo. I don't too, know why yeah. Circus mm-hmm. Burger was throwing me off. That's from Cosby Show. It's like a fictional. Oh, yeah. like that's right. Mm-hmm. I was like, where the hell did I know that name from? Yeah. Like, what is burger? Burger? <laughs> burger. But... yeah, you eat that circus burger and get kind of like loopy and fuzzy headed. <laughs> <laughs> Things get blurry. Oh, no. <laughs> what you put in my circus Oh, burger? my gosh. <laughs> 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 Sorry, that's bad. Uh, no, that's, that's, good. Good. No, that's, that's funny. funny. That's funny. funny. That's funny. Have, have you ever seen the? <laughs> I was at a oh, place. Gosh. That, you, you ever seen the? Co- there's a coaster, like a cocktail coaster, and it's a. <laughs> this is so bad, but it's a picture of him of Cosby, but it's out of fo- it's all fucked up, and and fuzzy, and in the bottom it says, "If you see this, it's too late." <laughs> and I'm like, that is the worst, and yet. Funniest thing I've ever seen in a long time. And it's a cocktail coaster. I'm like, oh, damn. Man. So that is oh, that, nice. that's hilarious. <laughs> awful. Absolutely awful. What kind of hat did Eugene wear? <laughs> no, now we're. Oh. No, sorry. I was going <laughs> to. I'll <laughs> Shit. I don't remember this one. Yeah, I, I I just had to kind of whittle it down. Mm-hmm. Man. Yeah, he's writing the letter to the army guys. and That's right. <laughs> Very split. I, I did get it right. You're right. right. He was writing the letter. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now there's two more left, and uh-huh. one of them is tough. I mean, it's it's all not really a trick question, but it's one where you have to really think. So I can't remember if it's 14 or 15. Dang, Megatron, you got you got one. Now you're not negative. <laughs> Which original power of Dracula did the character not display in the movie? This is not the hard one I'm thinking of. Just think about all the stuff he did throughout the mm-hmm. movie. Yeah. I've got it whittled down to two. Okay. I think I, think I, I don't. I'm trying to think. Eight seconds. Like I, I already think <laughs> so he levitated, you know, several times in the airplane. Um at, yeah. in the square, he right. uh, uh, teleported there. He obviously shapeshifted into a bat, so he didn't command animals, which yes. which he could actually do in the Bram Stoker uh novel. So yeah. you you were saying before we started too that uh these Dracula powers were based off the original Stoker novel. Most of them are, yeah. All of them are actually. He yeah. didn't do everything that one did, but I don't think he did anything the original did. 
not do, if that makes sense. So mm-hmm. I love this version of Dracula. It's so there's like certain things he's not allowed to enter like a building unless he's invited. That was like one of the he can't cross water. That's kind of a weird one. So anyway. Hmm. Good book. All right. How many enemy monsters are in the movie? You enemy know. monsters are in the movie. Enemy monsters, yes. You need to think about it. Okay. I'm <laughs> thinking. <clears throat> Are you going to reveal the yep. options? Okay. I had to th- I thought about it and I'm like I almost clicked the answer. I'm like wait a second, I miss I missed something. And I then I recounted it and I'm like okay. Okay. <clears throat> we'll see. Mm-hmm. Yes, we will. <laughs> we'll see how well I do on this one. Hmm. Good questions. Very good questions. Thank you. Very good. <laughs> All right. All right. It's actually the highest number. You've got Dracula's crew. You've got the brides at seven. You go back to the Von Helsing scene. You've got the skull guy coming out of the ground, and then you've got oh, another vampirist that they shoot. So ah, that's not. I missed, that. I missed the really? beginning one. Yeah. Back to the beginning. I missed the. <laughs> who got who got that right? Who got that right? Yeah, who, who, I know. who got it right? Speak. I want to know chat. who got that right. I'll give you a bonus three thousand points. No. <laughs> hey. I, have, I think I have it was it was luck. Blake. Way to go, Blake. Oh my God. Well. So that, that was it. That was the last one. Movie. That was the last mm-hmm. one. Yes. And, yep. and he said he blame. counted Frankenstein. Jeff, you're way ahead. Okay. I, <laughs> let's see. Who? Ooh. Two and three are, are, are pretty close. Oh yeah. Okay, so Very I'm going to get, away. actually, I'll give, how, how far away is third place from first place? What is that? Uh, some, someone join Math Squad and do this. It's about 4,500, 4,700. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a 5,000 point bonus question. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Super deep cut. Okay. What is Rudy's last name? Oh, oh shit! It's not in the movie. <laughs> it's not. Wow! You, 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 someone may or may not know this. Or someone. I don't know. It. This is like you. You have to watch the credits and see it. Oh, I, guess. I don't think I can think. Nope, of it Julianne says Rudy in the credits. Right. <laughs> it just says Rudy. Yeah. It just says Rudy in the credits. Okay. Yeah. You'd either have to hear one of us talk about it or see, like I think the pa- the the character description in the first page of the script. So it's not like if you watch the movie, you're gonna know it. You'd have you'd have to know this regardless. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I I <laughs> Megatron says Rudy. I guess for five thousand points, guys. Hmm. Yeah, because it really it only helps either you know second or third place. But <laughs> I'm gonna say he's Rudy Nards. <laughs> <laughs> that is incorrect. Ah. Oh. All right, no one, no one knows it, right? I was at least giving a shot. It was a super, super deep cut. Okay. His, his last name is Halloran. All right. Okay. Oh. Okay. Here's here's another. Gosh, here's another. Here's close. another. <laughs> here's here's another thought. bonus. I'll give redemption since you know I'm taking I'm I'm taking over. I'm <laughs> taking over this conversation now. <laughs> close, close encounters, anybody? Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> Stan Shaw. Who plays Dell's partner? Does anybody know his name? And if the answer is yes, then where? I know it. You do know it? I know it, but I'm not playing, but I know it. If no one else gets it, okay. and look, yeah, I'm, then, not, okay. I'm then, not Googling then we'll, anything. Then we'll talk so. about it, right? Okay. Um, and now I, I, I gotta I gotta look something up here real quick. In the name? Ooh. Do you need to look up the name? No, no, I I know the name. <laughs> I know the name. <laughs> I need I the no second. I need the second half. I don't. I don't either. I don't either. Jeff, Greg, do you don't. You don't know it. I don't. No, no idea. Okay. No. Can no, I guess no? then? Okay. So it's, yeah, it's get, Rich. Yeah. So yeah, his first name is Rich. Yes. Do we know his last name? No. <laughs> his last name is Sapir. S a p i r. Hmm. And it's a it's a super deep cut. 
because Sapir, Richard Sapir is a writer and his writing partner was Warren Murphy and Murphy and Sapir wrote a series of novella, like small book series called the destroyer, which is Remo Williams, that series. Wow. And Fred and Shane were fr were uh, fans of the destroyer novels and they have always been developing and one of their projects on their table is doing a destroyer series. So I love Remo Williams. That's a great movie. And I didn't know until about four or five years ago, I was in a used bookstore and I saw all of the, that the series of those books that Murphy and Sapir, I'm like, <laughs> the only place I've ever seen the name Sapir is in the script. And uh, it, I asked, he's like, yeah, that's, and I was like, oh, these are the, got it. Makes sense. The Destroyer was the book series for Remo Williams. Nice. Da -da 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 -da. That's a really Trivia. good deep cut question. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, the Rudy last name thing, you have to be like, you'd have to go to a convention or, or, or right. let's mm -hmm. talk about it on, on a podcast or something. But I, I never did it because we didn't do a lot of convention appearances in the last two years. Um, but one of my favorite, I wanted to go like super meta for like merch and I wanted to make, uh, bumper stickers and, uh, hats, buttons and a t-shirt, but an old, like 60s, 70s style campaign yeah. fashion and do Crenshaw Halloran 2020. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that, that'd have been a, that'd have been a fun meta deep cut. You're like, who, I, I, still may guys. Do it. I still may do it. Well, there's this movie called Monster Squad. Yeah. <laughs> Crenshaw Haller in 2020 is better than all the choices. We oh, have. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, awesome. those were great questions, by the way. Very good questions. Yeah, those were good questions. Absolutely fantastic. And uh, thank you for doing that. We appreciate that very much. Very much. Yes. Well, you know, I'm, I'm glad yeah. I tagged you yesterday because I'm like, eh, what the hell? Is he even on t uh, Twitter? Yeah, he is here. I'm going to tag him. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Amazing. I am, on, I am on, I am on Twitter. Yeah. That's, you never, you never know what happens, right? Um, I know. It, you know. Now it's funny. You can be like, oh, you're a like I'm going to get like a thousand, <laughs> but like, so you're probably the only one <laughs> going to jump in, but I enjoyed it. It's great. This is, this is kind of really what, I mean, it's fun anyway. I'm a trivia dork and we kind of <laughs> talk about, uh, <laughs> You know what we didn't talk about? What's that? Jar Jar. On purpose. Um, yeah. <laughs> I know. He's cute, Stephanie. We get it. He's funny. Hey. Um, I, like the, I like the prequels. That's fine. It's great. You totally can. You probably like the, you probably like the Goonies, too. Um, but, um, <laughs> oh. yeah. I do like the That's all right. The Goonies are great. I don't, I don't mess with the Goonies. They, yeah. they, were, they were great. They saved their neighborhood from being a golf course. It's awesome. They did. <laughs> um, oh, they, uh, no. I mean, it's fine. they were uh, not the world. Not the world. Yeah, that's great. No, I mean, like they were. No, that's what it was. Like they step up and like go against a developer and get like a pirate treasure against <laughs> an old lady and the pizza bumbling brothers. It's it's yes, it's fun. Yeah. Right. And, oh. You know, I, I only make fun because I would have liked the golf course because I'm a golfer, so I would have yeah. taken that. But like, yeah, um, yeah, you know, we saved the world from fucking Dracula. But you know, yeah, whatever. You did. Whatever. Yeah, you did. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> That's right. I mean, I, I think hi, T. Stephanie. I'm just, I'm just giving you shit because um, you like Whataburger. You know. It's fun. <laughs> I don't like Whataburger. Don't he said I like Whataburger. I don't like Whataburger. Uh, <laughs> I don't like Whataburger. I do love this movie, though. Yes. Oh, good. Well, thanks. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, like she that. and I are probably the biggest Monster Squad nerds here. I'm not saying you guys aren't, but Stephanie, ask yourself, like, 20 years ago, did you ever think you'd be on a live stream with the top build star of the movie? No! This is no. fucking amazing. So uh, no. I know. It is, it is, absolutely. I oh, didn't know wow. there would be anything like this 20 years ago. I so. well, no. yeah, number one, right? I didn't even, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I, you could ask me the same, but did you ever think you'd be talking to people about this movie? No, because this movie was dead. Like, it died. It was not alive. Yeah. But yeah. You know, awesome folks like you and and other fans, and and they, they kept it alive, and that's why we got to do what we've been doing for the past 
it's, yes. it's 12, 12 years now or you know 13 years now mm -hmm. and why they got a chance to you know make a really cool story you know in documentary form about that dynamic and um you know, it was fun. Thank you for inviting me and letting me crash your trivia night and, uh, you know, nerding out on some, you know, laser swords and hell yeah. Um, space wizards. Yep. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Um, it, it, and the main oh. reason is because I thought Laura Dern as Holdo going forward in other movies would have been awesome. Like you need a new leader of the, like I, but you know what? I didn't write it. Sorry. I didn't, you know, they didn't ask me. Nope. Yeah, that's how yeah. we feel exactly. They yeah. should have. They said, "Who's that way. kid with Revenge of the Jedi button? He should write all these." Movies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, right I here. would have done a better job. Yeah, well, they did. Um, yeah. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I, I would have done a better job. <laughs> correct. You know, we would have gone correct, to like definitely. find Luke Skywalker, and he's like helping a, you know, race of aliens save the neighborhood from a golf course. I don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> 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 but no, I think uh, kids' adventure movies are important. Um, yes, they're they're different today. They're getting you know they're getting better. Um, I, I think we were happened to be one of the one of the neater ones, even though it's in a fantastical realm, right? Um, I, I just think it's fun. I think it brings everybody together and it, it mm -hmm. at heart and authenticity, and it, it's fun to hang out with. Uh, you know. Cool. I would have hung out with you if you weren't Monster Squad fans, because like trivia is right, Brad. Like I love the, <laughs> that uh, that little trivia game setup is awesome, and um, yeah. yeah, that's fun. Uh, I could I could I could spiral down a rabbit hole of many many hours making some <laughs> trivia games. Like oh, absolutely, that. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. they would be not all Star Wars related. <laughs> <laughs> I might nerd out. I just did a podcast. Um, uh, do you know Junk Food Cinema, the podcast with uh, Robert Cargill and Brian Salisbury? I've heard of it, yeah. Yeah, uh, Cargill uh, uh, wrote um, uh, Sinister and uh, Doctor Strange. Uh, the, two Austin-based guys, Stephanie, you know, awesome, awesome people. And uh, Brian has his own uh, side podcast called Comfort Food. Uh, he has a junk food, junk food cinema podcast, and then he has comfort food. And during the pandemic, he's been like talking with people during his lunch break for about 30, 40 minutes about movies that are like people's comfort movie yeah. or comfort food movies. Like, you know, when it's raining or you're sick or, you know, your dog died, you know, what movie do you, do you watch? And, um, you know, I did his podcast today. It's already up. So if anybody's uh, not hawking another show while I'm on a chat, but, uh, <laughs> ch check it out. Salisbury is called, uh, and I got to do. I was trying to figure out what my actual comfort food movie would be. And then I realized that my comfort, my top three comfort food movies um, actually are all music oriented and they all start with the letter P. And I was like, this is weird. Uh, but my ultimate comfort food movie that I watch is Pure Country with George Strait. <laughs> Okay, and uh, so Brian and I talked about Pure Country for thirty minutes today. So that's that's so I can go from I can go from George Strait and Pure Country to Ewoks very quickly. Nice, <laughs> very nice, yep. and the worst video thing. game ever made. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, yeah, I we hang out all night, but let's let you know let's figure it out let's do this again or let's do uh, absolutely I want to play trivia one night. So sure. Like, Come up with another, um, I don't know, you could do Starship Troopers if you wanted to, because I know nothing about that movie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just picked a random one out of your head. Huh? Or, uh, yeah. or you know what? You want to know more? Seen, you could go deep cut, um, like you could do like Showgirls or something, or like Verhoeven out the bat. But um, Megaforce, whatever, that'd be great. Um, no, Megaforce. Do oh my gosh. Um, That's one I haven't seen in a long time. Uh -huh. uh, you should do Trivia Night on Ice Pirates. That'd be a good one. <laughs> Space Raiders? Because uh, I'm, I'm old. I said Megaforce and Ice Pirates in the same sense. Uh, but no, hey, <laughs> let's uh, stay in touch. Um, uh, yes. I want to come and like, like, I want to play trivia instead of just uh, oh, absolutely. Sitting, on, sitting on the sidelines. Yep. Um, but hey, you know, thanks for inviding me. I'm glad we, you know, until we got to, uh, you know, connect no, via thank Twitter. You. You're a class X, sir. Thank uh, you. And, uh, you know, obviously, you know, it's fun to hang out. But um, if you guys, you know, follow me, we'll hang out, say hi. I, I try to wave back as much as I can. Uh, it's busy like this week and or this month, really, with the, the release of the doc. But so mm -hmm. if I don't get to you, I'm sorry. But uh, there's a lot going on. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, I've got I've got to keep this momentum going on the release of the doc. And, um, 
you know, I, I appreciate you guys' support, and, and that's awesome. That's that's what it's all about. Absolutely. We, we appreciate, appreciate you coming on. Coming on. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much <laughs> for being here, Andre. Thank you. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Take care. Good Thanks, night. Andre. See you, Andre. Good Thanks for man. You too. That Andre was Gittler. so oh my freaking God. awesome. Andre Gower that is the Phantom so... Menace. Oh. I know. That is so awesome. Oh, oh my God. Oh. That is wow. the, um, the website for yes, there it is. his documentary, mm -hmm. Wolfman Has Nards. It's at, um, I put a link in the chat just a few lines ago. Absolutely, yeah. You can pre-order it. It comes out on the 27th. I've already ordered my copy. Me too. Because uh, it looks fantastic. We watched the trailer. and I'm doing it when we're I'm done here. I'm looking yeah. forward to seeing it. Yeah. Absolutely. Maybe oh, we God. can do a watch party on the documentary. At, at I would be cool with that. I would be absolutely cool with that for sure, yeah. But holy shit, that was great. That was. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God.